In this lesson, we're going to look at probability and odds. Odds in favor are favorable outcomes as a ratio to our unfavorable, and odds against is the other way around, unfavorable outcomes to favorable outcomes. In this example, it says Bailey holds all the hearts from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. He asks Morgan to choose a single card without looking. Determine the odds in favor of Morgan choosing a face card. Now before I start looking at the odds, I'm going to just look at the probability of drawing a face card. Well, the probability of drawing a face card out of a total of 52 cards, that would be on the bottom, I have, well, what's a face card? A face card is a jack, a queen, or a king. But we have that in hearts, in diamonds, in clubs, and in spades. So we would have 12 face cards. Now you can leave your fraction like this, or you can change it to a reduced fraction of 3 out of 13. The textbook and a lot of solutions that you're going to be looking at will reduce the fraction, but I'll show you how to figure this out in both ways. To me and on the exam, it doesn't really matter um, as long as you are reducing correctly. Otherwise, you'll get an incorrect answer there and it'll be marked wrong. So it's probably your best bet to leave the fraction as it is. So how do I change from a probability to odds? Well, in this case, we're looking at our favorable outcomes. So we've got our favorable outcomes to our unfavorable outcomes. And a common mistake that students write is they just rewrite this as a probability sideways, and they say that this would be 12 to 52, which is wrong. Why is that wrong? Well, I agree that 12 is our favorable outcomes, but 52 is our total number of outcomes, not our unfavorable outcomes. So how do we get that? Well, what's left over? Well, that would be 52 minus our favorable outcomes, which would be 12 to 40. Now, remember before I was saying you can use your reduced answer, which is fine, and that would be our favorable outcomes are 3, and our unfavorable outcomes would be 10, oops, I gave the answer, 13 minus 3, which would be 3 to 10. So regardless of what you write as your answer, if you give me 12 to 40 or 3 to 10, both of those are considered right, right. One's just a reduction of the other one. So that's the premise of odds. Let's take a look of, at another example. Here's example two. It says research shows that the probability of an expectant mother selected at random of having twins is 1 out of 32. A says, what are the odds in favor of an expectant mother having twins? Well, the probability of twins is 1 out of 32. And the probability of not having twins would be 31 out of 32. So when we're looking at odds, essentially, we're just looking at the numerators here, right? It's another way of looking at it. So we would have our favorable outcome being 1 to 31. Those are odds in favor of an expectant mother having twins. So what are the odds against then? You just have to rearrange them, 31 to 1. You just state it differently, and it's understood that it's favorable to unfavorable in A and unfavorable to favorable in B. Now, in example 3, they give you things in reverse. It says a computer randomly selects a university student's name from the university database to award a $100 gift certificate for the bookstore. The odds against the selected student being male is 57 to 43. That's against the student being male. Determine the probability that a randomly selected university student will be a male. So, first of all, 57 to 43, okay, we want the probability. Well, probability... Whenever I do probability, I need the total number of outcomes. How can I figure out the total number of outcomes here? Well, we know that 57 is against being male to 43, so I'm going to add those two values together. 
So that means 57 are female, 43 are male, right? So 57 plus 43 to give us the 100 students that we're looking at. So that means for every 100 students, 43 are male and 57 are female. Now remember, that doesn't mean that there's a total of 100 students, but for every 100 students. So if there was 200 students, right, all of these numbers would double. If there's 300 students, all these numbers would triple. It's just a ratio or a percentage or a probability of the number of students they looked at. So what is the probability that the student will be male? Well, that would be 43 out of... 100 then because the probability of sorry the odds against the selected student being male was 57 to 43 that means the 43 is the male and the 57 is the female a little bit confusing reread it a couple times to make sure you're understanding it's that they negated that against the selected student being male that makes it a little bit confusing in that example all right, our last two examples, example four and five, have to do with um, games and sports. So let's have a look at those. And that's really where we see odds most often, or more commonly. In example four, it says a hockey game has ended in a tie after a five-minute overtime period. So the winner will be decided by a shootout. The coach must decide whether Ellen or Brittany should go first in the shootout. The coach would prefer to use her best scorer first, so she'll base her decision on the player's shootout records. So we're looking at attempts. Player Ellen attempts 13, goal scored 8. So that means there almost should be another part of this table in misses. Because if there's 13 attempts, 8 scored, that means we have 5 misses. And for Brittany, 17 and 10, so that means 7 misses. So if we looked at our odds for each of the, our two players, we can decide who should go first. So let's take a look at the odds in favor for each player. So for Ellen, if we keep going along the table there, odds in favor would be 8 to 5. And odds in favor for Brittany would be 10 to 7. Now when you're looking at this, it's very difficult to read those odds and compare them. Well, 8 is to 5, 10 is to 7. How do we actually read that? We have two options here. We can either do this in probability and say, okay, the probability of choosing Ellen would be 8 out of 13. The probability of choosing Brittany would be 10 out of 17, and then changing those two percentages, 61.5% and 58.8%, in which case those are much easier to compare. Even out of 13 and out of 17 are hard to compare. So what do we do with fractions is we get a common denominator. And you can do that with odds too. So let's say I can see there's a 5 here and a 7 here. If I wanted them to be the same, I would times this by 7 and this by 7, I could times this by 5, and this by 5, and that works for probabilities and odds as well. So this would be 7 times 8, 56 to 35, and then this would be 50 to 35. So in all these cases, you can see the better choice, right? But just going in odds and favor isn't always going to be your best bet. Okay, let's take a look at example 5. It says a group of grade 12 students are holding a charity carnival to support a local animal shelter. The students have created a dice game that they call BIM and a card game that they call ZAP. The odds against winning BIM is 5 to 2 and the odds against winning ZAP are 7 to 3. Which game should Madison play? So again, in this situation, you might almost want to do probability and that's what I'm going to do here. So how do we figure out the probability of winning BIM? Well, we know the odds against are 5 to 2. So the total number of outcomes would be 5 plus 2. 
And because that's the odds against, our favorable outcomes would be 2. So that's the odds of win, or not the odds, but the probability of winning. If we do it for a zap, same idea. We'd have our 7 plus 3 to get our denominator. And this is the odds against winning, so the odds for winning would be 3 to 7, so our numerator would be 3. So that would be 3 out of 10. Changing this to a percentage, 2 out of 7 is the same as 28.5%. 3 out of 10 is the same as 30%. So which game should Madison play? Well, the one with a greater probability of winning, which would be 30%. And that's the end of the lesson. If you take a look at the next page, you have a bit of a summary for the key ideas, and that's good to have as well. Thanks for joining me today.